All right, guys. So let's look at the source of errors in the molar heat of combustion experiments that you would have done in a classroom. Okay. So here is, quite simply, our experiment. Now, with this experiment, um, this is essentially the, just the standard one. Uh, it might have been done with a can and you know, a, a cover across the top and the thermometer sticking down like this. Or it could have been done with a copper calorimeter. Uh, by can, I mean an aluminium or aluminium can. Um, now, essentially, we want to look at what are the sources of error. When we got our value, it would have been much, much lower than the accepted. So, for example, the accepted value is roughly uh, 1,000, this is ethanol, 1,360 uh, kilojoules per mole. But we got, maybe, I'm making up a number here, maybe 460 kilojoules. Now that is a mega difference. That's really, it's a massive difference. Okay, it's roughly a third of what you should have got. Actually, it's uh, less than a third. So, why do we get that? Um, well, there are several sources of error. Okay, so one, heat is lost to the environment. Okay, it just is. Um, and the reason this happens is that it should in a, in a perfect world, the heat would all go directly into here, but it doesn't. It evaporates, it goes, the heat leaves in all directions, okay? It, it runs out in the sphere. So how do we combat this? Um, it's actually not that hard. One way we can combat it without using a bomb calorie. We're talking about what we could do in a regular classroom. You could put a reflective shield around it, okay? So um, one that will reflect the heat back into the calorimeter that you've set up. So reflective heat shield. So foil. A foil will do that. Um, um, that is called a baffle. So the next thing, okay, so according to this setup here, we will ignore the lid, the, um, that there, um, heat will be lost out of the water. Okay, so that's cool. So if we if we put a heat on there, um, that'll also stop that. Okay, so a lid on top of calorimeter. Uh, okay, so that's, so we don't need that. Then, what else have we got? Um, it could be cooling from the winds. Like, you could have wind coming in this way. Okay, so crosswinds, breezes. This will have a cooling effect, okay? This is negative. We don't want that. So, what you could do is you include the baffle that we've already talked about. So, that solves two problems. All right. Water evaporation. That's an issue because, remember, we measure... what we, One of the, our formula over here is uh, delta H equals minus mc delta T, that M that we're measuring is the water, okay, so um, that needs to stay consistent, we could close the system, so we've already got a lid on there, what we could do is we could lock up with say, I don't know, cloth, something like that, something insulating, uh, block up, hole, for the thermometer. And that's important. Okay. So, and that'll do for that. Um, uneven heating of water. This will have a drastic effect on where the temperature is. So, uneven heating of water. Okay, so that's fine. How do we combat that? Um, we put a stir in there. Now, this is much harder to do in a school lab, but you could build one, you could rig one up. Um, it would take a bit of time to get it set up and you put a stir in there, that's fine. Um, imperfect energy transfer. So even, no matter how well we do this, we're not gonna transfer all of our heat energy into this water. Okay, so 
You do a closed bomb cl calorie map, okay? So we've got a closed bomb. Now this one, to be honest, bomb, bomb, calorie map. This one might be impossible in the classroom, um, and that's fine. But you, you would talk about it and say, this is one of the things you can improve. There's another one, and that is the inaccuracy. Oh, that's spelled wrong. Only one A. So the inaccuracy of our thermometer. Now, how do we combat that? We use a digital one. Okay, so simply a digital thermometer will be more accurate, there'll be less uh, parallax error when you're reading it. So, a digital thermometer, you can leave it in there to read it very easily. Um, a digital thermometer will solve this problem. All right, and that's the ways around that. Now, reliability and validity. Remember, there's some questions we can ask to assess this. Have I tested with repetition? Do it multiple times. Um, in a class, you're limited on time, so you might want to compare the various different groups. Are my tests repeatable? Did those different groups all use the same method, the exact same method? Because if not, then that might not be a measure of reliability. So let's look at validity. Does the experiment test the hypothesis? That's where this one falls down a bit, because you're not going to be able to control all the variables as well as you should have. So it will be valid, but not as valid as it should. You need to, the, the validity of it will take a hit, because there are other things which are going to impact it. Are all other variables controlled? No. No, they're not, unfortunately. All right. So well done, and see you next time.